Hello, everybody. This is section 1.2 in Math 100, Liberal Arts Mathematics. This is probably the very first lesson that you are going to um, be watching on this um, for this class. So let me uh, introduce to you, uh, first of all, how you take notes, what I expect, and then we will go right into our first lecture on section 1.2. All right, let me share my screen first. So typically, before you um, so typically before you start watching a lecture video, uh, what you should do is to go to the Canvas shell, go to that section, and print out these pages that um, are available to you as a PDF file. Uh, what you have is the uh, notes um, that have, are, have lots of blanks, like the one you're seeing here. And uh, for most uh, lectures, you have two pages of notes uh, for the content of that section, followed by a page of what is called a quiz for that section. Right Now, uh, the idea is for you to take notes, fill in blanks as you watch these lecture videos. All right. And uh, this is very important. I mean, this is just like attending class um, as you watch these videos. Uh, you say, well, you know, some of you may say, I don't have time to watch these videos. Well, then you don't have time to go to classes and therefore you will not have time to learn the material. And you may not be very successful if you do not have that time commitment. OK, so it is very important for you to watch these videos as you take notes. And listen carefully and by the time you are finished with, with the uh, videos you should be ready to answer these questions that are um, that constitute the quiz for that section all right so i encourage you to print out all of these pages answer these questions um, the quiz questions for the section as soon as you are done with watching the videos now once you are finished with this you know um, what you can do is to go to the go back to the canvas and in that module for this section, you will find the uh, online quiz for section 1.2. And what you see there is pretty much a set of identical problems. Uh, all these problems I see here uh, will be on the online quiz. So you already know the answers because you have already written the answers here, right? Uh, you may get most of them right. You may get some of the um, answers wrong. And uh, if you get something wrong, that's OK. You have time to fix that. You can uh, try that a second attempt. And by the way, that uh, page for section 1.2, for instance, for this case, um, already also has a uh, solutions to these answers. So if you get something wrong the first time, check your answers, correct your mistakes, and then take the second attempt. If you still get answers wrong, go to a third attempt, right? You have up to three attempts for each quiz for um, these sections. So you really have no excuse to miss any points, right? Only the highest score out of the three attempts gets graded and recorded, all right? So make sure you do these quizzes right after you learn and watch the lesson videos. This is the best way to learn the material. And then you can start doing your homework from the book. OK, so that's how uh, every section should be studied in this uh, in this course. OK, now with that introduction, let's go right into section 1.2. All right, our first real section we are studying is section 1.2. We uh, will skip 1.1 for the time being. And so the title of this uh, first section is called Statements and Logic. Okay, so why do we start with statements? I mean, isn't math all about numbers? And the answer is absolutely not, okay? Yes, numbers are a pretty important part of mathematics, but at the fundamental level, mathematics is about logic and reasoning, uh, how these statements uh, are together uh, looked at, analyzed in order to come up with another statement and so on, all right? So we'll be answering questions uh, in this section like these, what are statements? And by the way, for our purposes, the word statement and the word proposition would be used interchangeably. I will be using both of these. What are statements and how do you negate them? How do you combine them? You'll have additional questions, but this is what we will be focusing on. All right, so in logic, 
statements, sometimes called propos uh, pr uh, propositions, are mathematical objects like numbers. See, if you have numbers, you can add them, you can subtract them, you can uh, put a negative number in front of it, and so on, right? Um, you can assign values to numbers. And so those operations actually lead us, once you do these operations on propositions or statements, uh, they will lead us to some basic ways to find what's true, what's right, and what sound arguments are. Okay, so, um, Remember, you should be uh, filling these uh, blanks in as we uh, as we cover these. A statement must be a complete and declarative sentence. You know what a declarative sentence is. Um, we have interrogative sentences that are questions. We have imperative sentences that are commands. But uh, a statement or a proposition, mathematically speaking must be a declarative sentence. Each statement must have a truth value, whether it's true, oops, or yeah, of course false, right? Every statement has to have a truth value, right? Now, which ones are statements here? Which ones are true statements? If somebody says George Washington, you can see there's no verb here, right? I mean, George Washington is what? Did he do anything? What was he, you know, there's nothing except the name of a person. So this is not a proposition. It is not stating anything. Was George Washington a U.S. president? Uh, this, remember, is a question. It is an interrogative sentence, and therefore it is not a mathematical pro proposition. The third sentence says George Washington was a U.S. president. Certainly, uh, it is a statement. It is a complete and declarative sentence. Notice here the word was is a verb. George Washington is a noun. Now, I don't want to be too grammatical here, but you know, grammar tells us that you have to have a, 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 a noun, or you have to have a subject and a verb in order to have a complete sentence. So this one is a statement. Uh, mathematically speaking, it is a proposition and it is happens to be a true proposition because he actually was a U.S. president. In fact, the first one. The sentence, a dog is an animal, is complete and declarative, and therefore it is a true, it is a statement. And furthermore, a dog is an animal, so this is a true statement. The next one says three plus two is less than four. And did you notice that verb is, you know, and then less than four is what we call a predicate. Uh, three plus two is the now, in this case, the sum of three plus two. Now you say, of course, this is wrong, right? Five is not less than four, but it is a declarative and complete statement. So this is a statement, a proposition. It turns out to be a false proposition. The last one is a little tricky. It says X plus two is equal to 10. Is equal to is a predicate, it is a verb. And so it is a declarative and complete statement. This happens to be a true uh, a proposition. Now, the, the truth value depends on what that x is, right? If x is 8, this has happened to be a true statement. If not, it happens to be a false statement. OK, so that's what a proposition is. The negation is the first operation we are going to be studying. Okay, now what is a negation? Of course, it makes the uh, sentence uh, the opposite, right? The negation of a statement always has what? Um, if the statement is true, the negation should be false and vice versa. So the answer here is that it has to have an opposite truth value from the original proposition. Okay, here is the way to denote this. Typically, we write a lowercase letter to denote a, a proposition, okay? And so P could be a proposition. And then the negation is described or denoted with a this wavy line P, okay? So the negation of P is uh, written in with this symbol, and this is the negation of the statement p okay now uh it, it seems easy right i mean how do you negate a statement well let's do a little uh, a few examples to see
Okay, and you'll see that this is not hard, not yet anyway. The first statement says Nancy Pelosi is a Democrat. Okay, uh, it is a statement, it is a complete sentence, and therefore it is a proposition. Uh, it happens to be a true proposition because Nancy Pelosi is a Democrat. Uh, to negate this, you simply say Nancy Pelosi is what? Not a Democrat. Okay, simply enough, that is the opposite, right? Now you do not want to say, listen carefully, you do not want to say Nancy Pelosi is a Republican. Uh, because Democrats and Republicans, although in reality they are opposite, you know, we have people who are neither Democrats or Republicans, right? And so it could be, it's possible that somebody may not be a Democrat without being a Republican. And so uh, the uh, do the easiest thing here, which is the opposite, um, which is to put the negative uh, word, in this case, N-O-T, not um, in the appropriate place in the sentence. Okay, the next exercise or next example says, Mike Trout is not an athlete. Okay, now it is a declarative sentence. It's complete. Therefore, it is a proposition. It turns out to be a false proposition because if you know who Mike Trout is, he is an uh, outfielder for the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. And so he is an athlete. Now it says he's not an athlete. So let's negate that. He is not, not an athlete. Well, you don't want to say not twice. If you want to say the double negative, you simply erase the word not. Mike Trout is an athlete. That's the way to negate the already negative statement. It's just like saying negative of negative two is you know positive two, right? Double negative cancel each other. However, things get a little more complicated when you have a statement like this. And um, this unfortunately statement with multiple negatives are becoming more and more more popular common these days um, including in newspapers and news stories so we need to be able to analyze these okay in fact you may want to pause this video for a minute or two at this point to analyze this tell me if this senator is likely to have an endorsement from the nra or is he more of a, a likely to be a Democrat who does not believe in the uh, ownership of guns? Um, figure out uh, which camp this senator belongs to, and then come back when you think you have figured this out. All right, so one of the uh, nicest things about mathematics is that we can use nice, simple symbols, all right? So let's say G represents a group of people or a set of people who are for guns. What does it mean? These are the people who believe in the Second Amendment, uh, people who believe in the right to bear arms. And uh, you know, these are the people who think that uh, we should not have any restrictions or we should not have many restrictions on the uh, sales of guns and so on. Okay, now this person, now first of all, gun. what is a gun control? Gun control is either laws or rules about the, um, uh, the, the laws restricting or limiting the uh, guns, right? The use of or sales of guns. And so this is already the negation of G. Gun control is opposite of the, the position for guns. Ban on that is a negation, negation of the negation of G, which is of course G. If somebody believes in the ban on gun control, that person is for uh, guns, for the position and the use of guns. Opposing a ban means negation of this G. Okay, so now you started with a, a first negative and then you have a second negative. Now this is the third negative, a triple negative is still negative. But this senator does not oppose that so it's a negation of the negation of g so this senator happens to be an element of or member of the group g people who are for guns okay i'm going to rewrite this again because this is really confusing right your head may be turning uh, fast at this point so um in short the senator is um uh what do you think he is he or she is likely to be a democrat or republican Right. Uh, I believe that this person 
well, I, we know that this person is actually for guns. So, uh, you know, possibly uh, this senator has the uh, an endorsement of the NRA or possibly uh, more likely to be a Republican than a Democrat. Okay, let's um, make sure we understand this correctly, though. Okay, I'm going to write this in a, a more uh, detailed sentence. All right, so a uh, gun control means more restrictions, right? A ban on it means less restrictions. Okay, opposing, opposing a ban means more restrictions. Okay, this Senator does not oppose a ban. So he, she is um, <clears throat> for less restrictions. Get that? Okay. So, and, and another way to think about this is to say that does not oppose is pretty similar to support, right? So this senator supports a ban on gun control. Gun control means people are trying to limit the use of or sale of guns. And so a ban on that is to say, hey, let's just get rid of all the uh, restrictions on guns, you know? And um, so this Senator sort of supports, does not oppose at least, uh, a ban on that. So the Senator is um, probably for the second amendment or for the uh, use and the uh, position of guns and uh, believes in less restrictions, okay? Uh, it is, it's complicated, right? So if you, if you stop and think about this, then you may, you may have to spend a few minutes thinking about this before we go any further, okay? Now we go to conditionals in the next part of this video, but uh, let's stop and uh, take a little uh, break and then we go into the second page. The second page is going to be a little more challenging than the first.